Good morning and welcome to Motivational Morning, the podcast that gets you going before you get there. Good morning and welcome to Motivational Morning. My name is Vivi and I'm here, like always, with my good friend and dear co-host, Brian. Today we're discussing the book Zero to One by Peter Thiel. For those of you who don't know, Peter Thiel is a venture capitalist, which means that he invests in startup companies, hoping to make them a larger company. He's also a co-founder of PayPal, which they sold to eBay a long time ago with Elon Musk. And he's been an early investor in companies such as Facebook, Uber, Lyft, and etc. This book is actually a condensed set of notes from a master's class at Stanford, who Peter Thiel taught in the spring of 2012. And it touches on how to be a successful business and, more importantly, how to live in the world of startups because that is what he's involved in. All right, let's dive into it. My first point that I found was quite interesting was a quote from the book, which, which goes like this. Every moment in business happens only once. The next Bill Gates will not build an operating system. The next Larry Page will not make a search engine. And the next Mark Zuckerberg will not create a social network. Peter Thiel says, if you're copying these guys, you aren't learning from them. I thought this was quite important because we often look at people who have done something successful and we deem them as successes and how we should copy these things. You know, you could look at a company like Facebook and then immediately look at a company like LinkedIn. I think they are creating immense value in this world. And they're spinning it through a different term. But what if they, what if LinkedIn thought of the new social network and created something completely different outside of the business platform? Just a thought, right? Maybe we should be studying these people who have created something new, take their main ideas away, and then try to extrapolate those main messages from their actions into new and emerging markets that have not yet been created. Peter Thiel summarizes best by explaining the title of this book. Doing what we already know, he says, takes the world from one to end, meaning you're just making another version of it. You're making copies. But every time we make something new from scratch, we take the world from zero to one. And the result is a new emerging market. So, Vivi, the way I understand it is instead of taking Bill Gates' idea for a new operating software company, why don't we take his principles he used to actually build a business? So for example, let's take Mark Zuckerberg. Instead of using his ideas to try and build a new social media platform, what if we take his principle of starting small and just starting his business at Harvard instead of immediately trying to take over the world? Is that kind of what you're getting at, Vivi? Yeah, that's exactly it, Ryan. And that kind of brings me to my second point which is that every startup or startup company should start with a small centralized market that they can dominate. For example, Amazon never started up trying to buy Whole Foods and buy all these companies that open access to your door or have Amazon Prime delivery. They started with a small, simple goal to buy books and sell them online. That way, when they dominated that market, then they moved on to other markets. Another example is Apple. When Steve Jobs came back after being fired from Apple, he cut 90% of the product line to focus on only a few things. He chose the iPad, the iPhone, and the iMac as his priorities and took off everything else because he understood the fact that if you dominate a small niche market, then you can build and compound the effect of that in the future. I think another great example of starting small would be Box and the Stanford Sleep Clinic. So for those of you that don't know, Box is a company that focuses on cloud-based storage. Now, what Box did really well is they started off small. So one of their first sales was to the Stanford Sleep Clinic, a pretty small client. But a few years later, they're able to get the entire University of Stanford. So now Box is offered to every single faculty member and student that attends the university. 
And in addition, the entire hospital is run on Box. This would not have been possible if Box just went up to the university president and tried to get a contract for the entire university. They were only able to get this big because they started small with the Stanford Sleep Clinic and then were able to expand and reach outwards. And this brings me to my next point. So far this whole podcast episode, we've talked about how these great businesses have started small and then expanded their reach. But we should think about ourselves for a minute. Can we use the same advantage personally? So the book Zero to One talks a lot about monopolies and how having a big player in one industry is so powerful. But the lesson I really got from the book was, can I be a monopoly myself? Or in other words, can I get good at a few certain things instead of trying to be average at everything? A great example I always thought of was people always say that colleges are looking for a diverse student body. But what a wise man once told me is that just because they want a diverse student body doesn't mean they want each student to be diverse. They have a diverse student body because they have these thousands of students that each specialize or are amazing at certain things. And I think that's what we can learn from this book. Are we able to focus our priorities and become a monopoly in a few key areas of our life? And that will make us stick out compared to everyone else. It kind of reminds me of that old wives tale, Ryan, quality over quantity. And as simple as it sounds, I think it's definitely true and pertinent to a lot of our life situations. Also, if you're enjoying this book, Zero to One by Peter Thiel, or at least our review of it, please feel free to pick it up at audibletrial.com forward slash motivational mornings. Another point is as you craft to expand to adjacent markets or different markets, don't try to disturb. We all hear change the change the world change the structure disturb that business but is it actually good i think peter Thiel gives a great point that we should avoid all competition as much as possible when starting off the example he gives is napster if you guys remember back in the day napster tried to disturb the music industry by making every single music source free and available to everyone But what did that do? Well, after about a year and a half, the founder and the co-founder were both in jail. Now, that's obviously an extreme circumstance. But the point is, basically, that when you're starting off, you don't want to create as much disturbance as possible because you want to be focused on your niche market. You want to dominate that niche market. And if you disturb a lot when you're starting off, you just create more headaches that you have to deal with in the process. So like Peter said, and I'm going to take this point to heart, is when starting off, don't disturb. B, try to blend in as much as possible because at the end of the day, if you do that successfully over time, what really, really matters in a business is having cash flow. And if you aren't able to do that because of outside or external circumstances, then you aren't actually running a business. A great story I heard of strategically not being disruptive has to do with the airline industry. So I believe it was an airport in Texas. It might've been in Dallas. The airport was dominated by these big players like United Airlines and Delta. And then one year, a few small airline companies tried to come in and take over the market. But what they did that was so smart was instead of trying to just dominate and be disruptive and draw the attention of United Airlines and Delta, they came in, they only brought a few small planes, and then they undercut the competition. So why was this strategy so smart? Well, by only bringing in these small planes and focusing on such a small market, they weren't disruptive enough for United Airlines and Delta to worry about. It would cost Delta and United Airlines more money to try and kick them out of the market instead of just letting them be there and taking away a little bit of their profits. 
So I think that's one situation where instead, if they tried to be disruptive, immediately Delta and United would have kicked them out. But because they signaled that they had such small planes, they were able to make a successful business. I think that's a great example, Ryan. And that brings me to my last point, which is really important, I think, from Peter Thiel's book. And it states that it's so important to have contrarian thinking. You do this by asking what important truth do very few people agree with me on? And when you do this, you enable yourself to think outside of the box that people put you inside and enable you to find different solutions to problems that we already have. That wraps up our episode today. If you guys would like to get the Audible book for free, again, just check out audibletrial.com forward slash motivational mornings and pick up your free copy. We appreciate the support you give guys give us and it's the only reason we're actually around. And that wraps up today's episode. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.